Hello everyone. Welcome back to Sewing Machine Rehab. We are carrying on with our restoration of a Singer 301A. We're still in the uh, process of removing all the parts before we clean them. And then of course we'll put them all back on. But today, what I'd like to do is talk to you about how to remove the feed stitch regulator. And if you like what you're watching, please uh, subscribe and uh, like this video. That helps me out and it will let you know when we have a new video out uh, so you can follow along. But let's just jump right in here. So this is the feed stitch regulator. And basically the parts that we're going to remove are this indicator plate this stud here um, which is just a long screw and it turns uh, left and right when you uh, turn it all the way to the right so it's pressing down on this indicator plate you lock in your stitch length so you can swing up to reverse and then right back down to your desired stitch length without having to constantly double check to make sure you are um, carrying on the same stitch length after you go in reverse. But this is actually not that hard to take out. And the way that I like to do it is I like to go ahead and remove this uh, stud or uh, long screw. I think it's called the feed regulator stud. But if you look inside, you will see there's actually a slotted screw head here. And if you have a screwdriver that will fit into this hole, which, you know, I think I will turn this this way just a little bit so I can get a better angle here. Um, you should be able to get a screwdriver into that screw. And if you start turning it left, you will be able to loosen it and it's kind of tricky because this spins around the screw. You want to spin the screw itself. And sometimes that means you have to find a screwdriver that's skinny enough to fit down into the hole. But if you can actually get the screw itself turning to the left, you will actually pull it out of the actual, or unscrew it from the feed regulator itself which is what I'm doing right now. Here we go. So see, this just comes out and there are two parts here on a 301 and you wanna go ahead and, and keep spinning this screw and get it completely separated from this chrome plated part. And just be careful, make sure you do have your screwdriver in the head of the slot of the screw as you're turning and you can see it does start to come out. These can be pretty dirty and gunked up so it might spin freely for a little bit and then you'll hit a rough spot and that's just because the threads of these screws get really dirty and nasty and um, you're going to need to wash your hands when you're done doing this part of the disassembly. So I'm just gonna keep spinning this out and the screw comes all the way out. So this feed regulator stud, I guess, uh, screws into the actual feed regulator itself back behind. I like to take this out before I start messing around with the stitch indicator plate here because I can't get this plate off until this is out of the way anyway. And if I loosen these screws and the plate's just kind of dangling around, then I'm always worried I'm gonna nick the, the finish and the paint on this. So I take it off first. So we set that aside. And now you have two screws that hold the stitch indicator plate on. They are left to loosen. And just be careful because you are working around, you know, a beautifully painted indicator plate and you don't want your screwdriver, look at that, yuck. You don't want your screwdriver to um, slip out and 
gouge the paint. So be patient. And these screws are um, some of the more delicate screws. It doesn't take much to damage them. And I can see on the head of this screw that there is a little bit of damage. It's not bad, but it's there. I can feel it with my thumb. It's kind of rough. So we're just gonna unscrew this one too. And once I get it out, we can pull off the plate. I like doing it with my fingers if I can, so I don't mess it up. So this plate just comes off now. And I think it's made of brass, but I'm not sure. And when I clean the um, black ones, I'm careful because this um, finish can be damaged with some of the chemicals that you might use to clean it. But I will say, when you polish the body of the machine, these polish up just like the body, super nice and shiny. So now we have our stud. And if someone knows the name of this part, leave it in the comments below. I can't remember what it is. But this screws into the stitch indicator, which is sitting here. And I'm sorry, the feed regulator. <laughs> And we have our stitch ind indicator plate and two screws, but we're not done yet. So the next thing I wanna do is get the actual feed regulator out, but it is held on with a feed regulator hinge screw. And I think you can see why I might want to take this part out and clean it. I mean, there is just a ton of uh, lint and grease and oil built up in here. And I want it to operate smoothly. I don't want it to be stiff. Um, so in order to get this off, I have to get to the feed regulator hinge screw. And that's actually on the end of the machine. So let me turn this around here. Try to... <laughs> do this around the camera okay can you see i think you can see so this is a screw i'm talking about this is a massive screw and it's called a hinge screw because uh the the uh feed regulator moves uh around on it so you need a hefty screwdriver to get this one out and i'm gonna angle a little bit so i don't block your view but if you get a nice size screwdriver in here, you should be able to turn it. And I'm gonna turn it away for just a moment so I can get to it here. It's left to loosen. And this one's in there pretty tight, but there she goes. Okay, I got it turning, so let me turn it back now so you can see. Okay, pardon my hands as I reach around the camera. So this um, is not, here we go. There's actually several parts that are gonna come out when I get this out. Um, and it's a little, sorry, it's gonna be out of focus for just a moment. My camera doesn't know what I want it to focus on. It takes a few turns, but what will happen is um, you'll, you could stand here and turn and turn and turn and turn and think the screw's never coming out. And it's actually all the way out, but it's just kind of stuck in the machine. So if you have a magnet handy, I recommend using it to help you pull the um, screw out. So I just get, ah, see? So this is what I was after. And this is the uh, feed regulator hinge screw. And you'll have the screw and you'll have this little like 
spring washer that goes on the screw with the little ears, they're bent inward. They go bent towards the machine on the hinge screw. And then you screw it in. And this allows you to tighten down the screw, but it, it just gives you that resistance you need so your lever doesn't flop around whenever you're lifting it up or down. And that's how it works. So now you can look inside the machine and I told you this is a dirty job. So have some paper towels or I just, I wash these towels all the time. But now we can actually remove the feed regulator. And so I will spin this back around so you can see. So the feed regulator is just sitting in here on a little slide block. And now that the screw is out, you can just pull it off the slide block and there it is. This is the feed regulator. And this is just something you'll clean up. Um, I will say dry this part and I'll explain that when we clean it. You wanna dry it pretty fast and get a coat of oil on it because this can get rust on the outside of it. Um, but we have that and we have one more part. And I remove this part because it can fall off uh, pretty easy and it's sort of a pain to get back on, but the last thing you want is for it to fall off while you're cleaning the machine because um, you could lose it. So in here is this little slide block and it's on a little post and it's what the feed regulator rotates on when you're setting your stitch length. You should be able to reach your hands in and just kind of pull it off. If it's stuck and you're confident that it's not coming off, you can leave it and clean around it. But I typically try to go ahead and get it off if I can. I don't want to scratch it, so I'm being careful. But sometimes it's just a matter of getting the screwdriver kind of behind it and pushing it over and it's going to slide this way so let me try one more time here this one's up oh, I got it <laughs> and my fingers are small enough that I can do this but this is a little slide block and um, so the very first machine I ever took apart I didn't take this off and I found it laying on the towel later and I kind of panicked because I didn't understand where it went. But you'll notice that it's, um, it does have a, like a right side and a, a wrong side, if you will. Do you see how there's this little lip on the top of this circle? And then this side's more flat. So when I put it back on this little post in here, I'm gonna put that bumped outside uh, facing out towards the hand wheel. But when we do that, I'll remind you. So look how dirty it is. This should polish up nice and shiny silver. So there you have it. You have the slide block. You have the feed regulator. You have the hinge screw. Oh, whoop, here's a hinge screw and the washer and you have the stud, that's what I call it. I don't know what you call this. And your stitch indicator plate and the two screws that hold it on. So that's it. That's how you take that part out. And obviously you want to clean it up. So that's how you do it. Um, next, I think that we will go ahead and take off the 
light cover and look at the the wiring and see how we're going to get the motor out of the machine we're almost done taking parts off so please keep following along let me know if you have questions uh, if you run into any bumps along the way let me know and maybe i can help i appreciate you watching and i hope you have a great day bye